Whether you have a toddler who can't talk yet, a preschooler with a speech delay, or an older child with nonverbal autism, the same toddler strategies work to increase talking and decrease tantrums. So today I'm going to give you five strategies to get your child to talk. Hi, I'm Dr. Mary Barbera, autism mom, board certified behavior analyst, and best-selling author of The Verbal Behavior Approach. Each week, I provide you with some of my ideas about turning autism around and also helping kids with speech delays or early warning signs of autism with some tips and strategies. If you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel, you should do that now. So last week, within my toddler course, I um, have a membership program and a, a portal where we interact. And last week I saw this post that just like literally made my whole week. It was a post from a grandmother who is in my toddler preschooler course at the moment. And she posted a video of her grandson saying apple um, as he was taking a picture of an apple and putting it into a shoebox, which I'm going to talk a little bit more about the shoebox program coming up. But this little boy who was about two years of age, not sure if he has a diagnosis of autism, if he's just speech delayed, or if the grandmother um, was just worried about his language and started the course. But she posted that her little grandson um, was completely nonverbal prior, just two weeks prior to that video. Um, and now he was using several words and the techniques that uh, she was learning within my online course was, was making all the difference. So I know I've been in the autism world for two decades and I know these are the same techniques that work for kids, older kids with severe autism, um, who have a language ability of a one to four year old child. So it makes sense that these same techniques work for kids with just speech delays um, or not even speech delays. I've given um, instruction on how the shoebox can be done by just grandmothers who are watching their grandchildren over a weekend. Um, it's, it's just really good engagement is what I'm showing uh, parents within my toddler preschooler course. And it's starting to make all the difference. So, so excited to see that, that post. So it's one of the many messages and posts I read every week that show me that my easy systems are working and that I should just keep going and trying to spread the message that these same strategies work no matter what the age or ability level of the child or even if they have autism or not. I've done several video blogs in the past on techniques to get children talking more. Um, mistakes I see all the time like focusing on sentence length or teaching kids carrier phrases which I avoid. So so you may want to check those videos now or later as well. But today I just want to give you five quick strategies to get you started increasing talking uh, with any child. So my, nut, my first strategy is you need to do a whole uh, look at the whole situation, look at the whole child, meet them where they're at. Is the child not just looking at, at speech, that's actually strategy number two. Let's look at the whole child. Let's look at the age. Let's look at not just speech, but can they comprehend simple directions? Can they touch body parts? Um, also backing up to, do they have allergies? Do they have a diagnosis? Are they waiting for a diagnosis? Which is so heartbreaking as parents wait nine months to two years for an evaluation to see if it's autism. Meanwhile, there's so many things you could be doing. So looking at the whole picture, one of the things you really wanna look at um, that's related is feeding any feeding issues. I did a video blog on feeding pretty recently too, so you may wanna check that out. But if you show me a child with speaking problems, um, I can almost guarantee you're gonna have eating, drinking problems as well. You, The child may only tolerate mushy foods, they may only want finger foods, they may refuse utensils, they may be addicted to a pacifier or a bottle or even a spill-proof sippy cup. Um, 
they could then have major problem behaviors as well during feeding. So we wanna look at all of those issues as the first assessment and number one strategy. Then we can look at the second strategy, which is to really assess that talking. Uh, are they making sounds? A lot of kids in the past get labeled nonverbal. I've done hundreds of assessments. I've worked with thousands of kids directly over the past two decades. And a lot of times before I go in to see, before I did my um, independent evaluations, I would get told or I would read reports that the child is nonverbal. But then when I probed more, so he says nothing. He says no sounds, no word approximations, never, ever. Well, he does say mom occasionally and he um, says beads or says car, but um, but pretty much we, we don't hear any words. Well, when I hear that a child has any kind of words, um, in the past month or two, uh, I get excited because I think if you have pop out words, even if it's poor articulation, not clear, you have something. And, um, a lot of times these techniques will work to, um, get those pop out words under what we call echoic control, which means I say ball, you say ball. Um, that's really important. So first strategy is to assess the whole situation, especially feeding um, and problem behaviors, which will impact talking a whole lot. Um, strategy number two is to assess the talking. Are they saying any sounds, any pop out words? Do you have instruction, echoic control, excuse me. Uh, strategy number three is to stop talking in sentences and and stop working on carrier phrases. Carrier phrases are things like I want or that's a, and um, par parents and professionals get pretty excited when kids have one word utterances and they start increasing the demands and making them say all, and what it does is it increases demands, it screws up articulation. So instead of pretzel, which may sound like pretzel, now we have I want pretzel, which sounds like I love pretzel, and then, we're not doing anybody any favors here. So um, assessing those syllable lengths and uh, the, the uh, where they're at um, and stop working or even talking in full sentences. Okay, so strategy number four then is to slow down your speech and pick those one or one or two syllable words that are important to the child. Maybe the child has has said that in the past, words like mama, um, cookie, drink, juice, milk, whatever they're drinking, um, one to two syllable words. So instead of, uh, you wanna be slowing down, using a little bit more energy in your talking. So instead of saying, Johnny, let's go up the steps, it's time to get a bath, uh, which the child may or may not understand, let's just say up, 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 make it playful, make it a little animated. And um, as you're climbing the steps, emphasize one word. And that may make all the difference and you might start to hear more words. And then the fifth strategy um, is to use easy materials like potato head, inset puzzles, and um, my shoebox program. Now, I do have a free download about how to start a shoebox program, but it's basically like get a shoebox, cut a slit into it, and pick pictures of things that are important to the child, mommy, daddy, car, uh, ball, if they like fruit snacks or, or a banana or whatever, get pictures. Either you take them yourself or get flashcards. And then we're gonna say the word slowly animated like in step number four, banana, banana. And all the child has to do, he doesn't have to say it. Even if he said it, 
last week or yesterday, you can't make a child say it. So you just kind of continue to pair it up, make it fun, and the child, all he has to do is take it and put it in the box. And if we get those procedures going with a lot of the easy programs that I have developed based on all the science of ABA, um, a lot of times we get uh, more talking, whether the child is young and not diagnosed with autism or all the way um, an older child who is essentially nonverbal, but um, may learn to speak in, in sh short one, two word utterances if we focus on that. Um, so it has to be part of a comprehensive program when you get to an older child who with nonverbal autism, with severe autism. But when you're talking about a toddler who may not even be delayed or maybe just a little speech delayed or maybe waiting for um, an evaluation to see if they're on the autism spectrum, time is ticking, it's time to start and it's time to put these procedures in place. If you would like to download a free download about how to get started with the Shoebox program, you can do that right here. And if you um, like this video, please feel free to share it, comment, give me a thumbs up, and I hope to see you right here next week.